Hey everybody, once again, thank you Bruce, thank you Carl, thank you Hacker Dojo. Um, today I want to talk to you about building cross-platform VR using web technology, web browsers, the JavaScript programming language, and WebGL for 3D rendering. Don't want to get in front of that. A little bit about me first. As Bruce mentioned, I was uh, one of the people who created a technology called VRML. That was now... What a difference a decade makes. I couldn't get arrested in this fucking town ten years ago. <laughs> um, a friend of mine named Mark Pesci, we're all New England boys. I met him just before he moved out to San Francisco, and then I looked him up when my wife and I moved to San Francisco back in uh, 1994. And he had just crashed and burned in a virtual reality startup. Uh, you've probably been reading the blogs and the history pieces on this lately, especially after the Facebook acquisition. We got a lot of feedback going on here. Here's one too. Yeah. Um, but there was a VR boom over 20 years ago, from the late 80s into the early 90s. There were more zeros at the end of the price tags for all the hardware. There were an order of magnitude fewer people in these rooms, but there were meetups, proto meetups, kind of like this. I went to a few of those um, as VR was dying, and this buddy of mine, Mark Pesci, uh, said, we can rescue this thing, essentially, right? The web is coming out. This is gonna be the viral mechanism. We're gonna push out a lot of 3D graphics, and it isn't gonna be Gibson and head mounts. It's gonna be Stevenson and that kind of VR. It's Snow Crash, and we're gonna do it. And we're gonna use the web browser as a viral mechanism for getting that out there. And from that effort uh, came this thing called VRML, which was the first attempt to get 3D graphics transferred over the wire, over the internet, rendered on personal computers whose speeds were measured in megahertz. We had a 60 megahertz Pentium chip that was doing software-based rendering. There was no graphics accelerator in there. Um, we had 14.4 kilobaud modems, and we were trying to do 3D on the web. We were a bit early. We learned a lot about technology stuff, but uh, really we weren't ready for prime time. By about 1999, VRML sort of had closed up shop. The web was raging, but it was too early for that particular thing. But um, I had gotten a bug, and I've been just too stupid or stubborn or just too freaking into it to stop, and I've continued to work on various 3D projects since then. Uh, I built a virtual world and browser virtual world thing that was going to attempt to go up against uh, Second Life back about a decade, well, less, seven years ago or so. Got a lot of venture money for that. That crashed and burned, because Zynga came along and everyone was moving little cartoon people around growing soybeans. And <laughs> we got distracted from things like Second Life. But that's okay, and I kept at it. And this time I, I decided to take a different tack, and this thing called WebGL was coming out, which is 3D rendering built into your browser. And I, I decided I'm going to do this differently this time, I'm gonna write a book. So I contacted O'Reilly and Associates, and before long I had a book deal and I wrote, not one, but two books on how to program in WebGL. Um, go get the books, modest plug. And uh, I have a little consultancy in the city called Visi in San Francisco, the city up there, um, that is you know, building WebGL stuff for people. I'm really passionate about 3D graphics, and uh, WebGL is ubiquitous now, and that's wonderful, and I thought I was about to you know, sit back and uh, you know, collect checks and rest on my laurels, and then this other thing came along called virtual reality, and it's changed the conversation again. What's great is VR and 3D are two great tastes that go together, obviously. And so now here we are, and I don't know if you guys know this now, but iOS 8 has WebGL in it. So now all your new iPhones are going to have WebGL. So now we have three billion seats that you can reach by writing a JavaScript application in 3D. I mean, most of those are flat screens, right? But how long is it going to take before they're VR? And we're going to talk about that shortly. Uh, I'm going to attempt to show you a few of these. Love Hacker Dojo, but the bandwidth sucks here. So we're going to see what we can do. I'm going to launch a couple of these now. The other cool thing about WebGL is it's kind of hitting prime time in, term of, in terms of apps people are building. How many people have actually played with anything on WebGL in a web browser? OK, so a fair amount of you, right? And we saw last year there were all these cool tech showcases and all this stuff. What's been happening this year is actual commercial deployment. Nike's running brand campaigns. I'm going to show you this really nice little environment done by uh, an agency for uh, Nestle for a Japanese tea brand called O Green. And yeah, we're gonna see, hopefully this is in my browser cache, yeah. So here we are, and we're essentially in an immersive environment. You put the headphones on, you get a flat screen. You don't have stereo rendering or head tracking, but there's some really nice music with this. It's an ad, it's the flash ad, you know, of yesteryear recast in an interactive 3D environment. Pumped in through my browser, and this runs everywhere. It runs on my iPad with iOS 8 beta. It's working, it's absolutely gorgeous. 
Uh, Nike promotion I could show you, but that's just another sort of advertising thing. Here's what's really nice, interesting piece. It's called um, City of Drones. It was created by John Cale from the Velvet Underground. Remember the Velvet Underground? John Cale, the experimental musician, worked with an experimental architect in England named Liam Young. We'll see if this pops in. I love this one. So purely experimental piece, generative architecture, all being created on the fly. I'm driving the drone around with my mouse. I think this one is going to be awesome in an actual VR setting. I don't know what happened here if that crashed. I don't know. It's supposed to happen. I think we're just sending a download problem here. But absolutely gorgeous. I'll try loading it again just to see. Don't want to bore you with it. Go forward and and if it don't work, we'll move on. <laughs> but I think the thing I love about this the most is because you can do this kind of stuff on the web without friction, you don't need a big expensive tool set. You don't need to convince some investor you've got this business model around creating this experimental art. Yeah, I just don't think it's going to fire up, so I'm going to kill it. I'll just go back and look at the picture. You know, you don't need to convince an investor that there's some scalable business model around creating experimental art using, you know, in collaboration with aging musicians and, and innovative architects and you know there's going to be millions of those around the planet and then thereby justifying the budget to do this project you don't have to justify that anymore it's in your web browser it's just immediately available you can have a tiny team working on this and do experiments like this all day long so that's great on the other hand we have the world of VR right now which I think of at the moment and this is going to change and don't get me wrong I love VR I love oculus I love unity but what I'm about to say may be a little controversial a lot of people in this room Right now we're in the world of Leviathan. You want to go get your virtual reality demo, you're downloading a couple hundred megs of stuff. And then you're going through some kind of install process to actually get to it. And if you're on your Mac like I am, that means you gotta right click and tell the to find your extra stuff to just get it. It's a hassle, right? And it's all that way now because it's early development. We understand that's a big fat thing. These tend to be solitary experiences so far, though I think our next speaker's like we're gonna change that. Um, and you know, it's big and fat, hard to download. And the tools are, you know, Unity's great, but there's this whole sort of tool set and this kind of proprietary stack you need to learn. And here we are as developers, you know, in the little village looking up to the god, you know, hoping that the god's gonna give us the right tools and all the companies involved are gonna, you know, be nice to us and that we don't need a million dollar triple A, you know, game development budget to build this stuff. Very different from the web. And why I like the web, I had to think about this, someone asked me, about this in a recent meetup. You've been a web guy for a long time. Why do you like the web? I had to think about it, but there's actually a lot of reasons. So imagine if back in the day of building web pages, you weren't able to just share that stuff essentially immediately. So in other words, I have a new edition of my newspaper. I'm going to make a new PDF and everyone has to download it again tomorrow to get the next edition of the newspaper. That is not the way the web works. The way the web works is you get your news, you publish it, push of a button, the end user has instant access to it. Typically, they don't have to pay. They might have to endure a lot of ads, but they don't have to pay for that. Nobody controls it. We're in a culture of open collaboration. Lots of companies working together. They're all trying to vie for proprietary advantage in some way, but they agree upon the standard information transfer and all the protocols around that. The people working on those standards tend to work together in meetup groups like this quite often. Uh, and then you got view source. You hit that little thing on your page and you can grab the code, copy it, and learn it. It's right there for you. I love it. What I love the most, though, is that the web will never close up shop. Does everyone remember a technology called Flash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty good around 15 years, right? But you've built this content that, you know, pretty soon there's not going to be any way to play it. So you better figure out how to redo it in HTML5. And I think HTML5 is going to stick around for a little while. So, kind of drilling in the, into this a little more, how many people in the room consider themselves developers? A app developers, software developers, great, okay. I guess we're, we get the right crowd here. You build stuff with web technology, you've got a lot of advantages. I think of them as the 3Ds of the web, and yeah, that is an intentional pun. Um, the first is, you've got a cross-platform system for development. Something that you write will run in most places, with a few exceptions between browsers. Um, it's not controlled by one company, and a lot of it is done with open source technology that you can just grab and embed in your own application. So it really accelerates development, makes it a lot easier, and makes it so you don't have to write the same thing three different times. Of course, Unity does that for some limited set of environments, and that's great. But in general, the web is all about that. From a deployment standpoint, you don't have to build some brand new infrastructure back end for every new app you're building. There's this thing out there called the cloud, and if you build your application on a standard web stack, 
you really don't have to do a lot of extra work other than you know, maybe putting in some analytics to figure out what your users are doing. And even that you can get off the shelf these days. And you push a button and the stuff is live right away. And then finally, of course, this is an interesting one. How do you actually discover and share the information? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just send people a hyperlink to VR and it just all worked? And there wasn't any of this other stuff of going through an app store and installing it and all that. So this is, these are the reasons I like the web. So is it possible that we could bring the web type of philosophy and technology set together with virtual reality, having you know the Reese's cup, if you will, of VR? <laughs> I think it is. And let me give you an update on what's going on there. So, First off, we now have browser-based virtual reality. How many people played around with this at all, have tried using VR.js or any of that? So this is great, all right? So a lot of you guys are up on this already. There have been some extension hacks until very recently, um, it would be the only ways you could do this, that let you do head tracking, either through an external app that talked over a socket, it's very slow and clunky, or a browser plugin you'd have to install, which was a little faster. And combined with using WebGL, the side-by-side -side render, you could get a web app to do VR. Up until really recently, that was pretty clunky and the only way to do it. I ran the WebGL developers meetup um, in June, that's my meetup group in San Francisco, and just before our web VR demos of this stuff, which I hacked together, I got an email from Josh Carpenter from Mozilla, and he said, we're building it into Firefox really soon. We're gonna have Oculus head tracking and full screen rendering done, so we'll do the skirt distortion for you, uh, and it's gonna be a lot faster and better. And can I come to your meetup and talk? And I said, hells yeah. And then <laughs> the day of the meetup, Brandon Jones from uh, the Chrome team, said, we're doing it too, can I come talk? And I said, hells yeah, and that was two months ago, and now there are nightly builds of Firefox and Chrome, not nightly, but dev builds, they're one-offs, you can get that will do VR in your browser, and they're talking the same APIs, basically, I mean, there's a few little differences, but they're trying to already converge on the JavaScript program, right? So it won't be too far in the future where you actually will be able to build a virtual reality application with these kind of web technologies, and they perform pretty well, what I'm seeing so far. I just had to go get a 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro to actually run Rift. Uh, my little MacBook Air wasn't able to do it with a DK2, and that's native code. Um, and now I'm seeing my uh, web VR stuff I'm doing. I don't have stuff to show you tonight. It's a little broken with the new APIs. Um, otherwise, I would have been demoing this. Um, I've got some pretty good VR uh, demos running in a browser now based on the new browser tech, so that's great. There's one more piece to this, though. I mean, we love Oculus, that's the best experience you can get right now. But let's not forget, there's also a couple of billion virtual reality devices right now that we have in our pockets, right? There's smartphone-based VR, it's low cost, it's not the same depth of experience, it's probably the simple little roller coaster ride and the dive kind of stuff. But when Google came out with Cardboard, does everyone know about Google Cardboard? You know, it seemed like a gimmick, seemed like a joke. It's like, haha, you know, $2 worth of cardboard and you can have VR. Well, in companies like Dodo Case, who have a multi-million dollar business making iPad cases, jumped right on this. Patrick Buckley, the founder of Dodo Case, was at Google I.O. Seven weeks later, he had built better cardboards and he's already shipped 10,000 of them. <laughs> like, less than two months after that cardboard announcement. So, 25, 40 bucks and a smartphone. You got VR. So we are getting to a point where for some subset of VR we can do total fast, cheap, and out of control stuff. It's awesome. And we can do it with literally dozens of different tools and engines. People have been writing WebGL engines from the ground up, game engines, Goo, Artillery, Turbulence, there's a bunch of those. And even Unreal and Unity are in the game now. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a second here. Because a lot of you folks are probably building things in Unity and Unreal. Does everyone here know what mscripten is? Now we're starting to get into the obscure reads a little bit. But, I don't know if you saw this, but Unreal Engine and Unity both support WebGL now. And this is in the browser without you having to get a plugin, right? And this is how it works. They took their native code engine, they ran it through a tool called mscripten, and out the other end came lots of very bizarre looking JavaScript that gets loaded into a browser and runs their game levels at 60 frames a second. <laughs> what? This stuff works. They, I, you can't get this demo live right now, I only saw it in video, but I'm, they showed this a year ago with Unreal uh, 3, running in a WebGL, cross-compiled, you could hit it, and after the rather lengthy page load time, which I'm going to talk about in a second here, you've got amazing, immersive 60 FPS, full Unreal level with all the graphics running in your browser. 
So it's great, the kick, and you're using Unreal or Unity tools. So if you're already game dubbing, you, you could think about doing a, a web-based VR deployment using this kind of strategy. So it would work in a browser with a desktop browser with these tools if you want your end users to be able to just instantly click in a browser and get it on the desktop. Uh, the only kicker is, because of the way this technology works, the, down, the downloads are a little bit big. So what gets generated out of the Unscript and compiler thing results in 10 to 20 megabytes of very bizarre looking JavaScript. That's a lot if you're building a dink, dinky little web page. No one's going to build web pages with this. But if you're building an MMO or a VR experience and the end user sitting there waiting for a load bar for say a minute or two, that sucks as a web page, but contrast it with say, you know, you turn on your Warcraft and now you're going to spend two hours downloading gigabytes of updates. I mean, that's what core gamers do, right? You sit there doing update, update. Compare that to two minutes of a page load, it's not so bad. So it's, it's a pretty promising set of technologies that opens up web programming to people who want to use the Pro Tools and are already doing Unity type of development, and I know a lot of you are. So that to me is extremely promising. So I'm almost done it. I just want to tell you guys about a pet project. This is a very, very personal thing, but I, I've kind of come full circle. So what I found is I was starting to teach people how to program WebGL in JavaScript is, and buy my book and it'll make it easy to learn. Um, even that stuff, I was going to web conferences teaching people how to do it. You're basically showing folks large libraries of code. You're teaching them about scene graphs and you're basically working in JavaScript and JSON and talking about all these very technical things. And I'm going to these web conferences and 80% of the talks I go to, they're putting a bootstrap markup on the screen and showing you a style sheet. And I realized the only way this is going to get really ubiquitous in the web community, doing any 3D development and VR development, is if we could also somehow figure out how to integrate markup with 3D. So I'm working on a project called GLAM, which stands for GL and Markup. And you're able to create fairly sophisticated scenes just using XML markup tags in a page and then style them with CSS. And the CSS here is literally defining an environment map you just give it six textures. Um, I've got a class here in my CSS that creates uh, see-through Fresnel bubbles. You probably can't see them on the screen because of the contrast, but this, this scene has bubbles floating in them, and it's a Fresnel shader, so you can see through it, see the background, see reflection and refraction. And I literally just tie in a GLSL shader with a couple of lines of CSS and feed it parameters. The entire application that gives you this quick little interactive experience and stereo render, just with a renderer tag here, is on this screen. That's the whole application. Right. Yeah. And this is why Mark and I got started on this stuff years ago. Right? This is the vision that we believe anybody should be able to author and publish VR. 3D generally, but VR specifically uh, for what we're talking about here today. So I would love to see people looking at, at Glam and maybe helping me out with this project. It's a labor of love at the moment, but I, I, I'm actually doing a meetup talk two weeks from tonight in San Francisco. If you go to the WebGL de developers meetup page, you can sign up and come to that. It's at uh, Mozilla HQ. So uh, that's what I have to say tonight. I'm, I'm really uh, delighted to be here and see all the you know, activity around VR, and, and I'm hoping we can bring the, the web type of technologies into this discussion. Uh, and I think this is the, the forum to do it. So I really appreciate the opportunity you guys gave me to, to talk here. And I'd, I'd love to talk to people uh, during the breaks or afterwards tonight. And Q&A? Uh, yeah, let's go for uh, you know, three or four questions.